I'm gonna share a few simple tips, tactics, techniques, strategies for organizing your fly box on this episode of Fly Fishing University TV. Do I have too many flies? Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Q&A Friday. My name is Jordan Ulrich and in this episode, you might not believe it, but I'm actually going to give you a few simple tips, three simple tips for organizing your fly box, okay? So this was something that came from one of our Fly Fish University members and his question was basically just about you know, could you teach us about organizing your fly box? So I just did today an hour long presentation for our community, for our membership. And while this video is not gonna be an hour long, it uh, is going to share three principles that I use for fly box organization. Now, you might look at all these fly boxes and think you are out of your mind and you're absolutely correct, but each and every one of these actually has a great purpose and they are, all these flies have, they are in here for a reason, okay? Or we'll say maybe 99% of them. Fly box organization is a very challenging thing for a lot of people and if you have a lot of flies, then the more flies you have, the harder it gets to organize them, okay? So while I'm not gonna drag you out a whole bunch of the fine details, I am gonna share three simple tips, tricks, little hacks that I use for keeping my fly boxes organized. Now, you might look at this and go, how would you ever keep, how would you ever keep track of all this stuff? And it's pretty simple, okay? I'm gonna organize my flies by the bug, okay? So if I have enough of a certain type of fly, in which this would be a great example, okay? This is uh, one of my uh, coronamid boxes for fishing on lakes. Now, I have well over a thousand, probably multiple thousands of coronamids, and I need to know how I can find them when I need them, okay? So when I see a bug in nature, I need to know how am I gonna find the perfect bug that is going to represent exactly what I'm looking to represent. Okay, so the first thing that I'll say is organize them by the species of the bug or the species of the bait fish or whatever it is that you're representing, assuming that you have enough of those, right? So if you only have 10 damselflies, you don't need a separate damselfly box. You just put your damselflies in with a, another more general box, okay? If you only have 20 chronomids, it's maybe you just put them in a, a, a pretty general lake fishing box and then as time goes on, you can uh, adapt and adjust and, and eventually have their own box, right? You know, you don't have to have a separate box for every different bug or every different bait fish or every different attractor fly, right? You can, you can co-mingle them, but it's important that when you have enough of something, okay, when you have enough of something, it's crucial that you have fly boxes that are dedicated and designated for these boxes. This could be one box, this could be two boxes, it could be five boxes. I have, for example, I have, you know, boxes for small dry flies, I have boxes for large dry flies, I have uh, boxes for my small tarpon flies, I have boxes for my large tarpon flies, right here. So. It's important to understand though that you want to keep this as simple as possible. Now, everything that's sitting in front of me probably doesn't look very simple. I think there's about, oh, 20 some fly boxes right here. Okay, so, but the first thing that I do is that there is a method to the madness in that I will organize them either by the bug or the species of the bug or just the general purpose, right? So let's say I want to go salmon or steelhead fishing. Well, I've got, you know, one box, a small box here, and I'll get to this in a moment why I have two of these, and I've got a large box here. So I don't need to rummage through a whole bunch of different fly boxes. I just have, it's very, very simple. Okay, these are, uh, these are sorted by species, right? They're not sorted by species of bug, but species of fish. 
Uh, another great example, if I'm going permit fishing in the tropics, I have a box just for permit flies. It's not full of bonefish flies, tarpon flies, barracuda flies, all these different things. If I want to put on my hip pack and, you know, go do some wading or some paddle boarding or I'm out on the skiff and I'm just looking for permit, I know for sure where I'm going to find my permit flies, okay? The second thing is to have a great labeling system. This can be a Sharpie. This can be something as simple as getting a little labeler in which you can write on your fly boxes so that you know exactly what is in them. Uh, you, can, you can put little stickers. For example, I have this sticker on one of my boxes and I know precisely what's in here. I have this sticker on another one of my boxes. I know exactly what is in here. It's very important that you are labeling your boxes correctly so that you know what is inside of them because it can be an absolute maze sometimes. And you can even go as far as labeling the individual compartments in your box, but that's a little bit over the top, okay? Now the second thing that I'll do is I'll color code my boxes. So let's see, I have a whole bunch of, uh, I'm gonna use chronomids again as a great example. I have a whole bunch of different chronomid patterns and they all have their time, place, mission, role, purpose, but I always color code them from the darkest flies. If I'm gonna read it like a book, okay, the darkest flies on the top left the brightest flies on the bottom right or the lightest flies on the bottom right. So whether I'm fishing stonefly dries or whether I'm fishing nymphs or streamers or whatever it is, I have all or most of my boxes color coded in this way that I can read them like a book and pick out the pattern that I need based on the color coding. Okay, this is, uh, you know, for somebody who has a ton of flies, this is very, very important to me. Okay, so the second thing is color code your boxes. The first one is to sort them by the species of the bug or the species of the fish, or you know whether they're attractor flies or they're dry flies or they're wet flies or they're imitative patterns or hybrid patterns or whatever it is. The third thing is I like to have a master box and I like to have a carrying box, okay? So I'll give you a great example of this. Uh, let's just say that I'm gonna go on a steelhead fishing trip, okay? When I go steelhead fishing, I don't love having a thousand flies with me. And the nice thing is that most of the time, the fly that I tie on in the morning is pretty much going to be the fly that I finish the day with, unless I'm really feeling excited and I wanna go through a piece of water two or three times. I like to fish my flies, keep them very simple, and fish flies that I just ultimately have a ton of confidence in. So an example of the master box versus the carry box. So this is my master box here has, for me, again, if I'm gonna look in this box, I can read it like a book. I've got brightest to darkest over here, other than this ugly little gold thing that I'm almost ashamed that I have in my box because that is just kind of uh, sacrilege. But anyways, it's very simple to organize your fly boxes. I know that if somebody were to look at my fly boxes, they would say I'm absolutely insane. Uh, I actually didn't realize how many, I didn't realize how many flies I had until I did this presentation today. Final bonus thing that I would leave you with is always, always, always put the fly back where it belongs immediately after taking it off your line. It's so tempting to stick them on your hat and then by the end of the day you have a hat that is like its own little walking fly shop in and of itself. You tell yourself that you're going to fix it or, or you're gonna put the flies back where they belong when you get home or when it's convenient. It's so much easier. Just do it immediately. Okay, I promise, this is gonna save you so much time, so much effort, and you're not going to end up with a whole, you know, mess of flies all over the place. Your flies are going to be nicely organized. It's very, very important that the fly goes back where it needs to go after it comes off of your line, not just the easiest, quickest way, your easiest and quickest place to put it. That is a recipe for an absolute mess. If you have not already, I would love for you to attend the upcoming Fly Fishing Accelerator Workshop on June 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. It's a three-day event, 
And look, if trout fishing is your thing and you find it difficult on any level, it's because there's a knowledge gap from where you are to where you want to be. So my purpose with this workshop is to help you shorten your learning curve, shorten that gap so that you can create a better experience on the water. You're going to gain a greater sense of confidence once you understand what is going on. Right? So you're not just choosing flies blindly out of, out of your box. You're not just showing up hoping things are going to work. You're actually going to learn how to develop a system. I really truly believe that the anglers that can make the unconscious calculation by assessing any given situation the fastest on the most consistent basis are going to end up catching the most fish over a long period of time. We're gonna cover fly selection, we're gonna cover some casting tips and drills that I still use to this day. They're gonna help you increase your line speed, they're going to increase uh, the delivery of the fly and just how liquid and smooth you can make your casting stroke so that it doesn't feel like effort and I'm super excited about it. So you can go to flyfishuniversity.com forward slash accelerator. I would love to see you there and I look forward to seeing you on next week's episode. Have a great weekend.